Hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React View channel. So, as a majority of my subscribers will know and followers on my Instagram, that currently I am on holiday. So I'm on holiday maybe two months. Um, so as a result of that, after a pretty trying year, I will say, <laughs> without going into too much details, um, I thought I'm going to just throw caution to the wind and I'm going to do a little bit of a, a European tour <laughs> and kind of visit the countries that I've always wanted to visit. So what I thought I would do for each country I visit is basically kind of go through my favorite songs of those countries. And so Poland was the first country I went to. The reason being is I made it clear on my Eurovision YouTube channel that I have, which you're watching this video on, that um, I had every intention of going to the Eurovision party in Warsaw. Um, so I use this as an, as an opportunity to basically travel through Poland and do some sightseeing and meet up with some family and meet up with some friends as I made my way through. Um, so the first place I visited was Gdansk. Um, How long will I wait for you? How long will you wait for me? If you don't get too close you won't see the joke Maybe everything looks so cool Maybe I'm just falling When I'm almost out the door Your sweet smile is so Hey, I think you're just the same Better if you think again didn't have any expectations of Gdansk, I will be honest with you. Um, the reason why I went there was because <laughs> there was a really cheap flight on the day I wanted to fly into Poland. It was really cheap, it was right in there. Um, and so I just en ended up in Gdansk for a couple of days. Very popular with Scandinavians. <laughs> I met a lot of Norwegians, a lot of Swedes. Um, it's not too far from there. Um, unfortunately, the weather wasn't great. It's a, it's, a, it's a really, really good city. If you go there, you must go to the World War II Museum because I was in there for five hours. I don't think you should be in there that long, but I literally absorbed myself in everything. I read everything, I watched everything, and I came out and basically, I was trying to tell everyone what I'd learned, but no one wanted to listen. <laughs> no, not because they don't have empathy about what happened, but just because I was just like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and my friends were like, okay, so just tell me more about Gdansk, like bars and stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was great. And then I traveled to Warsaw and I went to you. Yeah, 
czy wydarzy mnie grzech Hajda by bez tego nie Wyszy nas z całych sił Czarna jedyna On chce być nią And I went to the Eurovision party um, Oh, the first night in Warsaw, I met up with a friend, Pavel, and I told him about this idea that I was going to do in regards to talking about my favourite Polish Eurovision songs, and I asked him his, and a lot of his was, like, the early 90s, and I was like, well, I'm going to start mine from, like, 1999, which was the first year I properly watched it. I was, and he was like, don't do that, Polish people will go crazy, because a lot of our best songs were in the 90s. I was like, okay. Um, so... Uh, he was great and he introduced me to a lot of Polish cuisine um, and I tried this cherry drink which is insane um, and the the bars are dotted all around Warsaw. I will say by the time I got to Warsaw I just loved the, the open support for Ukraine in regards to Ukrainian flags on every public building. I thought it was amazing. Warsaw was interesting. I wouldn't say it's a city built for tourists per se. Um, I don't want to speak ill of the capital of it's the business it's it's not only the capital it's the business capital of, of Poland I maybe spent maybe one too many days in Warsaw but it was good because I tried out some restaurants and bars yeah I enjoyed it and then I finished off with Krakow which I loved, loved it. Loved, loved, loved. Um, I, I, I don't know anyone who who has been to Krakow and hasn't loved it. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch... Is it Schlager, Lucas? He's managed to do a montage of all the songs from the first year that Poland participated in 1994 all the way up until 2022 with the Christian. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I think about them, maybe tell you some stuff about the artists that I learned speaking to people as I made, because I, I did, I talk, I talk about Eurovision a lot, but it was an opportunity to speak to Polish people about Poland at Eurovision, and they educated me about stuff. Yeah, let's get into this, because I'm now just chatting. Um, okay, so let's go through Poland's entries at Eurovision and I will tell you my thoughts and where they rank in my top 25. <laughs> let's do this. Okay, Schlager Lucas, you legend. Thank you so much for doing this for me. It makes my life so much more easier. To 
get my notes. Adita. Now, I'm familiar with this song. This wasn't one of the ones in the 1990s that I wasn't aware of. I, I'm aware of, of who who Adita is. So this is still Poland's best result so far. Um, her voice is incredible. At the end of the day, she was very young when she did this. And fundamentally, if you're going to kind of just, just describe this performance, it is effectively a young girl in a fairly modest dress if we take Poland 2014. <laughs> I mean, these, this was the day that obviously you could just rock up and just sing, right? Um, and she did that extremely well. She has got an amazing voice. I've just put modest dress, no circus. What? <laughs> there is no circus. Um, she is extremely talented, but speaking to people in Poland, she is quite controversial. So she does divide opinions in interviews. Like people don't doubt her talent and she she is a star in Poland, but she does like her conspiracy theories. <laughs> there was one particular conspiracy theory about aliens I had to Google that one of my friends in Poland was telling me about. She's got some kind of, also she's been very vocal about certain things about COVID as well, but that shouldn't discredit from the amazing results she had and how talented, how talented she evidently is. But yeah, she's still pretty big in Poland. Yeah, Pavel was telling me how she's always kind of dined out, as we would say in the UK, on the fact that she's Poland's best ever result. Out of all of Poland's entries at Eurovision, this is probably my seventh favorite. Number seven, yeah. Okay, Justina. Um, this song does have its fans. <laughs> it's very artistic. Obviously, I had to educate myself on some of these songs in the 1990s because I wasn't as familiar with them. So when I was watching them on YouTube to see the live performances, I was reading some of the comments. And, like, people really defend this song, like, in regards to its head of its time, you know, and it's really artistic and avant-garde and almost too good for Eurovision. And someone wrote, you do not serve lobster at McDonald's. <laughs> that did make me chuckle. I'm not sure there's much of a melody to this song to kind of kind of hook you in. She's a, she's a very good vocalist. Like Wikipedia tells me she has a range of four octaves. She's still pretty big in Poland. Uh, she's taken part in Dancing with the Stars. Um, she has co-hosted co Dancing on Ice and she has been a coach on The Voice in Poland. So she's still got a pretty significant career in Poland. I wouldn't say I am a huge fan of this song. Um, out of 25 songs at Eurovision, shoot me, but this is my 22nd of 25 songs from Poland at Eurovision. Can I just say, I want to thank Pavel for the first night that I was in Warsaw, who was like, don't you dare do your favourite Polish songs and not include anything before 1999. Because I had genuinely not heard this song before. Like, I profess to be a Eurovision fan. My knowledge is pretty decent from 1999 onwards, but before then it is a bit ropey, I have to be honest. But like... I'm really glad I've gone into a bit of a deep dive in the 1990s of, of Poland's entries. Her voice, very haunting. There's a lots, lots and lots of emotions in her performance. The instrumental in the song itself has great arrangement. I love this song, by the way. She's one of the biggest selling recording artists of all time in Poland. She so sold over a million albums in Poland. I, out of 25 songs Poland has sent to Eurovision, this is my sixth favorite. I actually really, really like this song. So I want to thank Pavel for making me go back and educate myself into the 1990s of Poland's entries at Eurovision. 
can't believe this came 15th. I think some people. Mm-hmm. I'm just making up my own words. Um, okay, 1997. Great orchestration. <laughs> Again, because I'm educating myself, was looking at the comments. Someone said, This song is like being enveloped by a wall of ageless sound. (laughs) Very eloquently said. It's it's not bad. I don't have any issue with this song. Again, I'm new to this song. I think I have heard this song before. I think out of 25 songs that Poland has sent, I think some people are going to really disagree with this. I put this as 17th. This is when I started cursing Pavel a little bit. I was like, they're not all baggers in the 1990s. What have I really got for this song? I haven't written anything. Uh, her voice is is nice. It just doesn't come through with this song. It's not a great song. It does deserve a pretty poorish position. Yeah, no, this song is not good. Sorry. Um, out of 25 songs, I've given my 25th position to someone specifically. I probably, in all seriousness, I should really put this as 25th because I don't have any desire to listen to the song again. But because 25th is going to someone and I'm going to give it to them gladly, um, I will put this in at 24th. It's a nice voice, it's just, after obviously Poland has sent some amazing vocalists, it just doesn't come through, does it? This is the first year I probably watched it, remember? Yeah, no. <laughs> I remember watching this year and I remember not liking it. I mean, what uh, what would I have been in 1999? young and i remember listening to it then obviously knowing my polish heritage being like oh it's poland um evidently that's how i spoke then Uh, (laughs) and um being like this is not great all i've got here is slow to get going and is there a chorus question mark (laughs) not convinced um for me i poland's going downhill a little bit this is my 23rd favorite there's nothing about i can't sing along to this song i've heard it a few times uh, throughout my 12 days in Poland as I'm trying to obviously do this objectively and it just doesn't stick with me. Um, I don't think it's a particularly great song and actually there's not a lot on the internet about him either so I don't know really what he did after Eurovision so interesting. If I had done this, if I had done my favourite Polish songs of all time, like a couple of weeks ago, this song would be nowhere. I would go through all of Poland songs and I'd be like, oh yeah. I remember this song not registering with me at all at the time. Um, And as a result, completely forgot about it. Um, I think as most people probably have, in all fairness, being objective, trying to come back to all of these songs again, I'm kind of in love with this song. In fact, I'm looking at where I put it now. I kind of want to put it higher. He's a really interesting character. So I was talking about him with Pavel, my friend in Warsaw. um, And he's saying that he's still pretty big in Poland, actually. Uh, He was really big at the time. And yeah, he's um, been a judge on Dancing with the Stars. He's been a judge and coach on The Voice and I was looking at his discography and he still released albums even up until a few years ago and they've still kind of been in top 10 in Poland. The really significant thing about him which I didn't know which Wikipedia has confirmed because Pavel told me is in 2021 he came out as gay which if you know anything about Poland is a pretty big deal and as a result of that 
seems that it hasn't really deterred him professionally in regards to the backlash hasn't been significant enough to affect his career. So kind of love that. I really like the song. I've got it as number 11, my 11th favourite song. Um, I have to admit, because even Pavel, when I told him, I was like, I'm listening to it all. I listened to it like 10 times today. And he was like, the song's not that great, Shane. And the performance is not good. And I did watch it. It is a bit clumsy. Like, what is he wearing? He chucks off that chucks off that coat. The backing singers are wearing these Cleopatra wigs. It isn't great. But I think some people would say it doesn't matter what it looks like. The song itself isn't strong. But when I was walking around the streets of Gdansk and Warsaw, I was like, for me. I wouldn't have been able to sing this a couple of weeks ago. Right, Ick Trucker. Now, I have to admit, I remember at the time loving this song, and then it's just gone off my radar. Um, so coming back to it has been a significant delight. So as you can see, the song is called No Borders. Um, it's about peace and integration. If you listen to the lyrics and translate the lyrics as I did, then you'll realize that this song has so much meaning in regards to what is happening at the moment in Ukraine. It's got a fantastic melody. Uh, Justina, which is the singer, the female singer, has a fantastic voice. That's not to discredit him, I can't remember his name now. She obviously doesn't come back for 2006, she's left by that point. This song's like, I've come back to this song and I've got a newfound love for this song probably because of the Ukraine thing and like I said going around Poland you can't ignore the connection between Poland and Ukraine and the support that Poland is giving Ukraine at the moment there's a lot of if you read the comments of their performance a lot of people do come out and say it's ahead of its time I mean you could say if this song was this year with everything going on it might have been slightly better but the seventh after a few pretty shocking years is pretty decent for Poland I'll go straight in there and say this is my second favourite Polish song of all time. Like, this song, I remember loving it at the time, and like I said, it went off my radar, but then coming back to it and listening to all the Polish songs back to back, it just stands out. Uh, this is a really strong song, and actually when you go to the comments, it's so evident that... Going to the comments, just do them out of curiosity for any Polish songs, because Polish people, when it comes to Eurovision, are very emotive when they come to their written expressions in the comments. And there's a lot of love for this song from Polish people. Every day. Every night, I see you swear, sweet song, love song. Yeah, not a fan. <laughs> um, so we go from a kind of really ahead of its time song to effectively what would we call this jazz pop. The lyrics are really repetitive. I mean, it's very repetitive. Sweet song, love song. Sing song, wanna give you a song. It's, ugh. Go to the comments on this one where a lot of Polish people come out, I think because it didn't do so well and obviously people are trying to find answers. And a lot of people kind of go for her look and basically what she's wearing. And basically I did see the word vulgar a few times in translation. There are moments where I do feel they had slight technical issues. The playback at moments were too loud and her voice wasn't necessarily coming through. She has got a voice which is a bit like Marmite, you either love it or you hate it. Even if you love it, you have to admit it was a bit croaky at times. Um, I do like the final bridge before the last chorus where it goes a and I'm like, oh, I'm kind of into this. And then it goes It's just, it just doesn't gel. It's not a great song. 
And I, she left the band pretty swiftly afterwards. In 2005, she left. Um, but they were pretty big at the time. I remember Terry Wogan, our commentator, saying that Blue Cafe were pretty big news in Poland at the time. I've got this song as At 18th. Mind you, I've really not said nice things about it, so I don't know why it's as high as 18th, but it is. I've done this subjectively, it's 18th. There are parts of this song which are okay to listen to, but as a full three-minute piece, it's a bit jarring. Mm -hmm. Um, again, doing this, I've been brought back to this song. I don't remember this being totally on my radar at the time, but it is a very nice folk song. It is very Polish. Yeah, this is when we had the full, like, only one semi-final, right? So this came 11th in a semi-final. There was no one or two semi-finals, they were all together. So in that respect, this definitely would have gone through had there have been two semi-finals. Back to singing in Polish. I actually quite like this song. So I've got this as 14th, which is pretty high. I really like 2006 staging, generally. Father, my heart. Um, well, I mean, this couldn't try any harder to try and be a Eurovision song as we might understand it at the time. I mean, it had very extravagant costumes, as you can see. Um, there was a clothes reveal, there were fireworks, there's sign language. There are five languages and sign language. It's 11th again. I just realised that. I've just seen that. I didn't properly clock that. Um, go to the comments of this one. A lot of Polish comments when you translate them, there was a real sense of embarrassment <laughs> amongst some Poles during and post and even now when it comes to this song. Um, I don't like this song. I think it doesn't help that they'd already participated uh, with a song that I loved. Um, I've got this quite low. I've got this as 21. I've listened to this song quite a few times trying to get on board with it and it's just, there's nothing in this song. I don't like the rap from Real McCoy either. Yeah, this is a huge downgrade from 2003. Come with me, it's time to party. When I tell Pavel I love this song, he looked at me like he wanted to smack me in the face. <laughs> like, I think, had he not given me that response, an absolute disgust, like I was speaking some sort of offensive language, I probably would have had this higher. I loved this song at the time. <laughs> And I love this song now. And if you go to the comments of this one, there's a lot of comments that basically say this was ahead of its time. Mm, not sure if, if I would go that far. It's catchy, it's sexy. Um, I'm not ashamed to say I love this song. I think this song is hugely underrated. I felt, I thought it felt very modern at that time. Um, one of the comments on one of the videos did say that their Poland's answers to the Black Eyed Peas, <laughs> which I wouldn't go that far. Um, and then, but then you flip that with someone saying, this is the longest three minutes in Eurovision history, so we'll go and do it. Yeah, this band was a Eurovision band. I remember that. I think in Poland at the time, the Eurovision rules were, you had to have already released a song before you could enter the national final. Um, so I think they rushed a song to enter into the charts and then they did this entry. They didn't stay for around for very long, this band. This was just for Eurovision. This was a Eurovision package. I thought this was number nine, but I probably would have it higher. Had Pavel not looked at me in disgust, I really like this song. Let's go to a 
party with me. Yeah. Right, I says before I but when I the name Isis was associated with the Egyptian god, right? Not now. Well, I'm not gonna try and sing along to this because her voice is too good. Things between us is Oh, Isis G. She's now called Tamara G. I think she, <laughs> for obvious reasons, changed her name. She made Polish history. Since they introduced the semi-finals to Eurovision, she was the first act to qualify for the final. I actually think this is a great staging, and I think the, I wouldn't fault the camera work either. I think the staging was really good. I mean, it's a classic ballad with a great voice, a solid performance. I mean... 24th, that was last that year, wasn't it? No, second to last is 25. I would say it's slightly underrated. I quite liked this song this year, that um, in 2008. And kudos to her, she wrote this song. I always kind of respect people that write their own songs at Eurovision. I didn't really pick up it at the time, but I know I've read comments and heard people say since that some people had issues with her because of her pronunciation. The way that she sings and the style of singing means that her pronunciation of words isn't always clear. I thought this was quite good. I think this is slightly underrated. I've got this as eighth. I remember being um, on the beach in Sopot, just sitting there, it was very hot. And I just had this song on repeat. And I was like, oh yeah, I forgot, this song's really good. And then I was like, oh, actually, I actually really like this song. Number eight in my top 25 Polish songs at Eurovision. It's my destiny. Arms around the world, you see. I'm probably singing it as well as she did, bless her. Um, Lydia, oh, she came back this year, didn't she? For the Polish national final with a really bad song. I didn't like this song. I mean, that's not fair. There's nothing not to dislike. There's nothing to dislike about this song, but there's also nothing to make you go wow either. I'm not a vocalist. I haven't necessarily got an ear to really work out pitch and whether people are in tune, but... I know particularly near the end of this song, she struggled. There were rumours that she was sick. And I think, again, if you're a vocalist, I think there are moments where she does have breathing issues, which probably supports the fact that she was sick. I'm not a huge fan of this song. Where did, where have I got this song? Number 19. I think the song's very forgetful. Um, sorry, Lydia. There's not really much I can say about the song. This, even if she sung the song amazingly, I don't think the song's that great. Um, and because I think 2008's song was so much better and was sung so much better, this is obviously significantly inferior to that. Oh, Martin. I'll be forever, ever and ever. Right, okay, so the performance was really intense. And actually, I have a very different experience with the song when I listen to it to when I watch it. Now, I'm going to be really careful what I say because Marchin has been really good to me. Before I left the UK every year, again, if you're a follower of my YouTube channel, I've mentioned this in the past, I would host Eurovision parties and they would be pretty big ones. And I would get past Eurovision acts to kind of record videos as a sort of kind of welcome to the party thing. And Marcin did one, bless him, and it was very good. He was very entertaining. Good evening, um, Europe. Bonsoir, l'Europa. Guten Abend, Europa. Dobry wieczór, Europa. Here is your favorite ever contestant from Poland, 2010. It's me. <laughs> uh, wish you an amazing evening. Have so much fun, guys. I wish I was there with you. Uh, yeah, have fun, have fun. So, Alexa, Nicola, Maya, Anna, Jackie, Michelle, Tom, Ro, Dave, Dan, Rupert, and Shane. Have so much fun. And may the odds be ever in your favor. And I do follow him on social media. I do like him as a person, so I don't really want to go to town on this. So, it's a folk song. Um, I think the producer of the 
staging didn't help much in. I mean, I think the choreography is slightly off. Um, he's got a musical theatre background and he's extremely dynamic, but this performance, he was very much wedged to that microphone. And as a result of that, he was very much static when actually I've seen him being very dynamic and due to his musical theatre back his face he was performing but I mean he really held on to that microphone like it was some sort of life belt <laughs> love you marching <laughs> yeah and there's the moment near the end where I don't want to say he strangles her but it, it's a bit strange I say all of this because he sings it like an absolute boss. His voice is incredible. And the song is actually very good. And I think the staging, unfortunately, did not do this song any favours. This song would have should have been in Polish. There's no reason why this song should have been in English. It was a folk-sounding song. It should have been in Polish. I think he's a, an incredible guy. And like I said, the song's great. His voice is incredible. I blame the producer of the staging. This is my number 13 out of 25. I think the song's good. Together, no matter, you want me to be by your side. Oh, dear. Uh, obsessed with this song. This song is criminally underrated. I may have used the word underrated in previous songs. This song is criminally underrated. Underrated in history, genuinely. First of all, let's just talk about the fact that Dusseldorf staging. The layout's not bad, but in regards to the camera angles, I think most Eurovision fans are in agreement here. Dusseldorf will go down in history as the worst produced show. I mean, there were many acts that just were not helped by the cameras. Um, and this song really fell because of that. A friend in Poland did say in regards to this song, when I was basically waxing lyricals about how much I love this song, that she did go to Instagram or social media and basically say that she couldn't actually hear. There was technical issues and... For her, the three minutes was a really bad experience. I remember because I put money on this song. <laughs> I didn't put money on this song to win. I put money on this song for top 10. Quite a bit of money as well. Um, and I remember it not qualifying. And I remember my friend was in Dusseldorf at the time. And he was just like, the audience went crazy for that song when it finished. Scroll to 2 minutes 31. I feel I'm the only one that's seen this. I thought it was a thing that everybody knew. Go onto the song, go and scroll to 2 minutes 31. One of the backing singers falls and you hear her yelp. She goes, ah! But I don't think, I think, I don't think that would have affected the result. Like, I don't think anyone noticed. But now and again, if I feel, <laughs> it sounds evil. If I'm feeling down, I was like, I know what I'll do. Is I'll, I'll go to Magdalena Tour's performance, scroll to 231 and, <laughs> and realise life's not all that bad. I actually thought the choreography was incredible. I thought the choreography was seamless, but the camera angles just really didn't do it justice. Uh, again, she wrote this song, and I will always credit anyone who writes their own music at Eurovision. She also uh, did a video for me from one of my Eurovision parties, and she was really sweet, and I'm really appreciative of that. Hi guys, um, it's Magdalena Tu. Uh, I would like to wish you a really great, great evening on Saturday night. Um, sorry for my sound, it's a little bit different today. Uh, and probably I look a little bit different than I used to. Uh, okay, so I would like to wish you uh, all the best for all of you. Thank you for all your support. It's amazing that you still remember my song, remember me. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot for me. Uh, I really appreciate it and I love you so much. So all the best for Tom. Greg, Alexa, Jackie, Michelle, Kat, Dave, Dan, Joel, Will, Annie, Ro, Dean, Trevor. So, shit, shit, sorry for that. So, have a great fun. Uh, um, so guys, the ghost is up. We're, at two, we're in 2011. Um, this is my number one. Like, I've been obsessed with this song. 
before Eurovision 2011 and during 2011 and post 2011. Uh, please stay tuned. There are other songs to come, but at the end of the day, I'm sorry, this song for me is everything. And unfortunately, on the night, coming first in the semi final didn't help it, but just the camera angles were just awful. This song's incredible. I did not. Okay, so I have to be really careful what I say about this because Donatan and Cleo are both pretty big in Poland. So we've got a few years off from 2011, so we're now 2014. So this was the year where the televote, huge discrepancy between the televote and the juries. Right, positive things. Um, it's about women being strong and able to work. It's, it's an empowering song. Uh, it's beautiful in Polish. Uh, I do feel it loses some momentum when she starts singing in, in English. <laughs> I was never a huge fan of this song. I, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I was never a huge fan of this song. And I will say, <laughs> I had a really good 15 minutes at the airport from Krakow to my second destination, just reading the comments <laughs> under this video. Um, some of the best ones, it was um, just literally four words watch with prayer group <laughs> that made me laugh um another one like there was a lot of people basically saying this young people this was my first memory of eurovision because it's such a memorable performance like people even in the uk now like passive viewers will know about this performance um, and yeah, I remember reading one comment basically saying that it was their first time watching Eurovision with their parents and their parents gave each other worried faces <laughs> when this song came on. Um, the comments were really, really funny. I, I just, not a huge fan, quite careful what I say, because they are both uh, big names in Poland. Um, as a result of that, I mean, if I'm going to be honest and objective, like, and this isn't me putting it higher than it deserves. I am going to put this in 12th place. Yeah, this is my 12th favourite. I mean, there is enough with this song to kind of... Yeah, it's a pleasant three minutes. But I just didn't understand the hype. Yeah, 12. It is very much about hope and strength. And I mean, she could have gone down a whole other route in regards to the staging of this song, um, in regards to garnishing sympathy, et cetera, et cetera. But it was very much an uplifting performance, which fits with the lyrics of the song. You know, Eurovision fans know will know the background of Monica in regards to the fact that she was in a car accident, what, in 2006? And I actually quite liked the aesthetics. I liked the colour scheme. I liked the images in the background. I was really skeptical before s seeing this, but then when I saw it on stage and actually heard the choir, the live choir intermingle with her live vocals, I was much more optimistic and much more favorable in my views for this song. But fundamentally, if I'm gonna just judge it on the song itself, it's not a song that I particularly get excited about as I'm listening to it. Um, so as a result of that, ranking all 25 songs, this just happens to fall in at 20th. But in the name of love, without peace, oh, 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 tell me black or white, color is your um, another song where polls, if you go to the comments kicking off about juries, um, and even more kind of, I guess, qualified to do so, right? The juries gave this seven points in total. And then obviously, well, you can do the math, right? So 222. Yeah, that's right. I can do math. Because <laughs> uh, I'm looking at 229 points on the screen. Uh, comes from the televote. Like, huge, it, it must still be, I know um, 
Kaino's discrepancy was pretty significant. But I, I don't know which which song of all time has been screwed over by the juries, but Poland's well up there with 2016. I mean, he's pretty, well, pretty he's, he's, he's a big name in Poland. Um, he's a coach on The Voice. I saw that uh, he had a number one album in 2019. He's, had, he's only released two albums and both of them have gone to number one in Poland. Like, it's a big deal in Poland. And Polish people feel that he's robbed. Like, genuinely feel he's robbed. Um, and I get that in regards to the huge discrepancy with the televote. It's a catchy number. I remember my mum... She didn't mention much at the time, but then I had the CD on in the car. And I remember... I remember we were driving along and she was like, I think this was my favourite, Shane. I was like, okay, mum, do you want to listen to it again? She's like, no, no need, but I want to tell you, I think this was my (laughs) favourite. Because it's so unbelievably catchy. Um, In all seriousness, if you listen to all of them back to back, you can't, you can't not acknowledge just the fact that this is an earworm and it stays in your brain and ear. So as a result of that, it it just has to be high. This is my third favourite Polish song of all time. The speed of life. Um, again, if you're a subscriber to my channel, I think I've said on countless times the fact that 2017 is my worst Eurovision of all time. It was a bad year for me generally. Um, it was the first year I'd never hosted a party because I'd just moved into a studio to save money. I just uh, wasn't crazy about the songs that made it to the final. For so many reasons, I just, I've disengaged with 2017. And as a result, songs like this have unfortunately just gone by the wayside. So actually doing this has actually been quite good because actually listening to this song in particular, I'm like, ah, there are songs which I really need to get back in touch with from 2017. Um, but I didn't know that the day before she was under a drip. Like she was actually really ill. She was on anti- antibiotics. And I will say you wouldn't know from this performance, her live vocals were were amazing. I think actually I didn't really credit the song enough at the time. A dark song that was actually quite nice to the ear and she's really emotional and she actually really delivers that emotion with this performance. Um, and she had uh, big disagreements with the with the Polish broadcaster because they had a vision uh, how they wanted this performed. They wanted like an orchestra, um, and she was like, no. She was very much clear that she wanted her brother on stage. I quite like it. And actually, if I was going to do my, I wouldn't have even this song wouldn't have even come into my mind if I had to do my top ten Polish songs a couple of weeks ago. But doing this, this has brought me back to this song. So this is number nine. Cassia Moss, Flashlights, actually a really credible song. You would never know she was on a drip the day before. Let me up now, baby. Let me up. All right, again, I've got to be very careful with this song because Gromy um, is really big in Poland. This song was really big in Poland and Poles will never agree generally that this song should not have qualified. Poles generally feel this song should have qualified. But a lot of them will acknowledge that Lucas's vocals weren't the best. (laughs) They weren't great. Lucas was actually at the Polish Eurovision party the other day. Um, His vocals were quite good there. I didn't like this song. Poland, I didn't like this song. I know this song was a big hit in Poland and I know Poles generally have this song high in their kind of opinions. I just thought it was a bit basic. But I will say, watching this performance a few times recently, I quite like Gromy's choreography. (laughs) He does. And the crowd seemed to love it. The crowd seemed to like, particularly when it finished, the crowd went crazy in the in the stadium. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this song. I've got this as number 16, and I think that's quite generous. Oh shame if you do like it. There we go. Okay, 
Tulia. So I will confess, I did not like this song. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was at the Polish Eurovision party where they were there. They were there. They were there. Um, And they performed this song. And I finally got it. It took me a while, but I finally got it. And actually, you could see all around me, Poles love this song. Generally love this song. And do you know what? I was reading a lot of the comments, actually, on their performance on YouTube. And you do feel that actually it is kind of strange how Go A, which had a traditional folky song and went more down like an electro route, well, this is folky, and this is traditional, but they went down more of a rocky route. It's kind of interesting. I mean, 11th isn't anything to be sniffed at. Like, that's a real credible result. Again, 11th again. Poland seems to have had a few of those. Um, but with Goe doing so well, it's kind of interesting that this didn't do as well. Uh, Goe, there was something special about those three minutes. Everything came together, including the staging. I don't think the staging of Tulia's was bad. Um, I thought, I was surprised when I saw they were 11th, I thought they weren't going to do that well. But like I said, when I saw them live and being surrounded by poles, it's something clicked. Um, Yeah, it's folk music with a modern twist. It's unique. It's, and you know what? It's authentic. And you know, particularly, particularly this year and then moving forward, a lot of countries are now moving towards a Western sound. I need to credit Tulia for doing something more kind of, you know, authentic and traditional when a lot of countries are abandoning that and trying to be kind of Western. If it was just on the televote, they would have come, they would have gone through, they were eighth in the televote. It's, it's, it's not a bad song. Like I said, if I would, if I was going to do this ranking a couple of weeks ago, this would not have been very high at all. I didn't like this song, but I, something kind of clicked. I think, I think when you see anyone live, I think, I think things change, right? So I've got this as 15th. 15th. Uh, I remember first listening to this song and not being too impressed. And then I think COVID had hit Uh, And the show wasn't cancelled at this point. And um, I was doing... I was already in lockdown in India. I think most people were in lockdown. And and there was a hiatus about what was going to happen with Eurovision. And this song started going massively up and up and up. It was probably tuning into the mood at the time. Polish broadcasters, TVP, isn't it? They should be shot. And the reason why they should be shot is because... In a second, I'll talk about how much I love this song. She wanted to come back... And I really wasn't favourable of any country that didn't re-invite the 2020 artist back in 2021. I was sympathetic to countries like Sweden, to countries like Finland and Estonia that have huge national finals that bring in TV ratings. You can't just cut those. Poland doesn't have that. Poland had every chance to bring her back. And... I've read some stuff where she's openly confessed it's her dream to do Eurovision. I've never been a fan of TVR, but that's because my friends and family do not speak very nicely of them either. Um, I don't want to get into Polish politics, but they are starting to become murky waters in regards to a mouthpiece for the leading party in Poland. I won't say anything more. I love this song. And actually, I've been reintroduced to it. I hadn't listened to it in a while, I will be honest, but I've been reintroduced to it because of what I'm doing now. Power Boy, she was 17 at the time. That's absolutely crazy. That note at the end, you know she would have hit it live in the stadium and you know that would have resonated with so many people. This song would have done so well. It would definitely would have qualified. I really like this song. I really, really like this song. I've got this as a fourth. My fourth favourite song. I really, 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 really hope TVP make amends and invite her back. (laughs) Making it a ride. If you stumble and fall, never touch the ground. 
Okay, Rafael. Right, it doesn't help the fact that I already said that I was already going into him and his entry slightly biased because I really genuinely believe that all broadcasters should bring back the 2020 artists. And knowing that Alicia, 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 I don't know how to pronounce her name, wanted to come back and it was her dream to do so. And for TVP to turn around and say, no, I'm already being like, well, you better bring something amazing then. You, this better be good. I remember hearing this for the first time. And I remember being like, WTF, like what? When I was reading the comments of each song, Polish people are pretty fair in their assessments of their songs because go to this song and like literally, I think pretty much every Polish comment when you translate it is Polish people being like, what the actual, this is awful, this is embarrassment, this is not like, this is shameful for our nation. Like, and yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, it was not good. My favourite quote, which I read, was, this song is like when your dad decides it's his turn on the karaoke. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like that. Um, and there are so many comments, basically, saying that the backing vocalist, who basically supports the whole song, whose name is Pavel Skiba, by the way, deserves an Oscar because, yeah, he saves... I mean, this came 14th. Um, he saves the song. I mean, at some point, Rafael just stopped singing. He just stopped singing. Basically, the last thing I'll say, if you want a mood lifter, just type in Rafael the Ride Eurovision and just read the comments. Like, literally, I found it hilarious. Yeah, I, I have to award my 25th place to this song. For all the reasons I pretty much just said. In my dreams All that I've done All that I've done In these dreams Poland, before, during and after this performance were, are, so unbelievably proud. I remember the day after Eurovision, like, so many Poles came to my channel being like, oh my goodness, Christian, Christian was raw, blah, blah, blah. 12th is a, if, I mean, if you, like, I've gone through all these 25 songs and their placements. 12th is a really, really good place. And let's call it, this was a year of very, very slow songs. And also, didn't he follow Sam Ryder? Or he was before Sam Ryder? His placement didn't help him either. I actually didn't have any issue with the staging. I thought the staging was fine. I don't think it m impacted his result whatsoever. I think Poland should be super, super proud of this song. All I can say about Ockman or Christian is, you know, this year was the first year where I actually got to speak to Eurovision artists. And like a Eurovision fan, I was like a little girl, like really nervous about it. Oh man. But... Okay, I gotta be honest with you. I uh, I started following Eurovision about two, two and a half years ago. Just but I was born when I met him and actually seeing him in interviews, he's an extremely unbelievably humble human being, which is, it makes him so unbelievably endearing. I think there were moments where actually I kind of was rooting for him and rooting for Poland, irrespective of his song, because of him. I mean, let's take into account the fact that he's a bloody talented singer anyway. Mm. He's just such a kind guy, such a, like, a gentleman. And his vocal technique is amazing. He had one of the best vocals of this year. And yeah, it was just a year of ballads, unfortunately. And like I said, his placement didn't help him in the running order of the final. Um, but you will probably have realised now that he is my fifth favourite Polish song of all time. Okay. So I will so, leave yeah. it there. Um, if you're still tuned in, please do subscribe to my channel. Please do click the notification button so you're informed if and when I post videos. And yeah, until next time, stay safe.